Welcome to End Goals, an LCMS Youth Ministry podcast. I'm host Reverend Mark Kiesling, and I'm with DCE Jim Lohman. We are here to bring parents, church workers, and lay leaders discussions and resources to help your youth ministry meet its end goal, which is young people who are disciples of Jesus Christ for life. Today, we are interviewing members of the LCMS Servant Committee. The Lutheran Church Missouri Synod has a long history of engaging young people in service. This service is a part of our Christian calling to show Christ's love to our neighbor and those in need. And also service is a great way for young people to put their faith into action and to learn about current and also future vocations. For decades now, the LCMS has provided LCMS tournaments and Jim Lohman, staff member of LCMS Youth Ministry, serves as director of this program. Jim, tell us a little bit about LCMS servant events. Thank you, Mark. Uh, you mentioned that Servant events have a long history, and actually that goes back to 1981 when LCMS first hosted two pilot projects to see uh, if there would be an interest in young people serving in the name of Christ. Uh, One of those pilot hosts, Lutheran Valley Retreat in Colorado, is still a host of LCMS servant events today. Uh, Through the years, Churches, camps, recognized service organizations have joined with youth and their adult leaders to provide opportunities for young people to serve and uh, impact their community. It's just been an awesome opportunity for the hosts, for the youth, for their adult leaders to work together, building relationships and meeting the needs of uh, the churches the camps, and the communities where they serve. Today we have here in the studio four members of the LCMS Servant Event Committee, and they're going to be discussing how they have served through the years, both as taking groups to LCMS Servant Events and then serving as hosts and leaders of LCMS Servant Events. They're in the building right now because uh, we're preparing to be training a number of the other folks who will be leading events in the summer of 2020. Great. It's have, uh, awesome to have you all here and certainly welcome to the End Goals podcast. Uh, so many youth are very eager to serve uh, others, and this happens in a variety of settings in the church and outside the church and also in, in many vocations. And we celebrate young people who reflect the love of Christ in their service and also encourage congregations and parents to find ways to engage young people in implying their gifts and their passions and service. Um, today, we want to spend some specific time talking about the resource that is LCMS server events. Uh, but before we dive in, I would love for all of you on the committee to go around and introduce yourselves mm-hmm. and where you're from and a little bit about your vocations. Shelly, you want to go first? Sure. I'm Shelly Carlson. I'm from Forest Lake, Minnesota. Uh, my home congregation is Lord of the Lakes. That's where we do a servant event out of called Heart of a Servant. Our servant event this year for 2020 is July 12th through the 18th. Um, I've been the director of youth and education uh, at Lord of the Lakes for 28 years. I am a lay leader. I am not a professional church worker. Um, And uh, my children, while they were growing up, went and did servant events with us. I've been doing servant events for about 18 years. I've been on the committee for about 12 years. Awesome. Um, The cool thing about servant events is my kids, uh, even though they're adults now, they still... uh, are, have relationships with kids that they did serving events with while they were teenagers. I think that's a pretty awesome thing. My husband and I, we own a rental equipment store, which is really handy when you do a construction <laughs> site. So um, that's who I am, and that's, I'm so excited to be here to talk to you about serving events today. Great. Barry. Hi, I'm Barry Akers. I'm a associate pastor at Lutheran Church of Our Redeemer in Kokomo, Indiana, coming up on my 20th year wow. in ministry here. Um, we have been doing servant events for those 20 years that I've been at Redeemer. Um, our event is called Mission Possible. We're doing our 14th um, event this summer. Ours is also July 12th through the 18th. So. If you don't want to go to cold Minnesota, <laughs> come to warm Kokomo Beach. Yeah, right. The one the Beach Boys sang about uh-huh. is, I believe, was Kokomo, Indiana. <laughs> sure. Fifty miles north okay. of Indianapolis. Boy, boy what last, a promoter! <laughs> last last summer it was hundred and four in Minnesota. <laughs> 
And I think we were 80 the whole <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Perfect weather. Uh, we also do construction. We work with our community in uh, serving the, the, the needy of uh, Kokomo. We've had opportunities to work on many a home and um, opportunities for our kids to have those chances to serve. Um, I'm married, have three grown kids. Um, been blessed to watch uh, my two boys go into professional church work. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've got a son, Ben, who's here at seminary, fourth year, ready to serve the Lord. I've got a son who's a DCE, Caleb, and then I have a daughter who works as a church secretary. Awesome. All, I'm, I'm sure it's all because of Mission Possible, serving events. Cool. Very cool. Thanks so much for your service. Joe. Hi, my name is Joe Palinkas, and I'm out of Painesville, Ohio, which is near Cleveland. And my host site is at Camp Luther Haven in Albion, Indiana. The projects we usually do are um, service projects at the camp, working on trails, working on building new decks, ramps, or any other types of projects that the, that the summer camp needs. Um, my home, my hometown is Painesville, Ohio, where I go to Zion Lutheran Church there. Uh, my main career is an excavation contractor where we do different um, excavations of soils and uh, um, get uh, get areas ready for new buildings. Um, my family uh, is really close to me and I have uh, two awesome nephews and a niece, a new niece. And so um, I love to play with them and uh, it's always exciting to uh, get to be around them. Awesome. Randy. And I'm Randy Ronning, Director of Family Life Ministry at Trinity Lutheran Church at DCE by trade. Um, We host Riches in Richmond, which again is is construction mostly. We are looking to keep disadvantaged seniors in their homes and they've been cited with code violations. We go in and and take care of the code violations that we can. Most of those are on exteriors of houses. Um, We also do wheelchair ramps. Uh, an interesting part of our week also is a special needs adult party mm. um, where we do bingo and dancing and dinner um, and just a time of sing along. Um, so not just work opportunity, but also um, a, a chance to be with, with people. I have a family of three children. My wife Kay is a Lutheran school teacher and all of my children too have had the advantage of being on servant events. And I think they've definitely shaped the way they look at life, um, their role in life. In fact, two of them have gone on into church work, one as a teacher, one as a director of Christian education, and especially my oldest daughter um, chose overseas ministry as a result of going on a, on a different servant event, mm. not ours at Riches in Richmond, but one on the Texas border, um, which made her dedicate some time to serving in Guatemala. Wow, just take time to pause and give thanks to God for the ways in which servant events have worked in the lives of you, your families, your communities, um, just think of all the hours that have been invested in people. Um, and, and I want to take time, to, I guess, for someone maybe to reflect a little bit on, Jim mentioned this before, about you know, servant events are about people coming into your community, serving those in need, um, serving your neighbor, but also it impacts those who do the service too. Um, and so we're going to be focusing on that. There's kind of that two-part piece to where communities are engaged, communities are cared for, and at the same time, the participant themselves uh, are able, be able to bring their gifts, but also grow in that experience. So um, the question I want to ask, and this can be, again, either for those who served on the events or those who are served, where have you seen Jesus use the opportunity to serve as a way to bring youth and adults closer to him or the church? As, as I think about our uh, servant event, as well as the ones we've attended with our youth, um, servant events are just one of those few opportunities for adults and youth mm. to work mm-hmm. together in concert. Um, whether it's working side by side, we do construction. Uh, we've went on servant events to uh, Camp Pioneer in, uh, in, in Angola, New York, where we've led VBS in the inner city and opportunities to minister and, and make relationships with, uh, with children there and adults. Um, just that working side by side, but then also in a component of servant events is also studying together as we gather together for Bible study and spend time in God's word growing together, adults and, and youth. Uh, fellowshipping together, we have you, you got to have fun together, and that off also builds those relationships. And then finally, worshiping together as we pray, as we praise, as we come to the Lord's table together. It's just been wonderful opportunities to build friendships, uh, relationships, not just between youth and other youth, but adults and the youth. And it's just been a wonderful opportunity. So you never really know what uh, God is going to do in your community when you. Uh, offer servant events. 
Um, as I mentioned before, my husband and I, we have, we own a, a rental store business. And uh, one day, a customer came into my store to get his chainsaw sharpened. And um, we were really busy that day. But uh, while he was there, it, it kind of slowed down a little bit. So while he was waiting for his chains to get done, I engaged in some conversation with him. And I said, so uh, what are your plans for today? Obviously, he was going to use a chainsaw, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and he told me about uh, his uh, daughter's mother-in-law, who was in a, a tight situation in her life. And uh, she was had been ill, and she had a lot of work that needed to be done around her house. And at that time, we were looking for homes to work on for our servant event. And I said to him, so I do these things, they're called servant events, and, and we go to people's homes who are in need and do work around their house for them. Would she be interested in us coming over there and seeing what she had, what we could do for her? And he was like, are you kidding me? And I'm like, no, really, that's, that's what we do. Well, how much is it cost? I said, well, really, it, it doesn't, we don't charge the homeowner anything. We we come over there in the name of Jesus and, and do some work. And um, our congregation is generous, and we're able to raise funds to pay for uh, materials. If if the homeowner wants to help with materials, that's great, but they don't have to. And he was like, you are kidding me, right? And I said, <laughs> no. And, and he's like, oh, well, you're like an answer to our prayers. I was like, oh, that's so cool. So anyways, we go over and we, we uh, uh, meet the home, homeowner and uh, there's a lot of work that needs to be done at her house. And so her soffits are falling down and the outside of the home is crumbling apart and it's in bad shape. So we have a contractor friend of ours stop over one day and he's like, oh, you guys, I, I don't think you should you should do anything here and well we felt pretty bad so we said to the homeowner tell you what this is what we can do we can paint your deck for you and she was like well okay so uh, we send a crew over there and we paint her deck and uh, we sand and paint every other piece of woodwork that we possibly <laughs> could do for her that week and at the end of the uh, uh, event uh, pastor and I always go to the homeowner um, to see how things went and we go to uh, this homeowner and we say oh we're so sorry that we couldn't do more I always get a little choked up here um, and she says to us oh you guys did more than what you think you guys made me remember that God cares mm. about me mm. and that is what servant events are all about it's was it's a pretty awesome thing Thanks, Shelly. That's a amazing story of, of the impact that servant events have in a, a community and, and on your life as well. Would like for, for you, because your vocation connects to construction, and, and Joe, your vocation connects to construction as well, thinking about hosting events. Shelly, you're connected with a congregation. Joe, you're connected with a camp. So how do, how do you prepare for that time of service and then what's going to happen during the actual event? Shelly, your story kind of talked about that, approaching homeowners to see what the needs are. But then uh, as part of that is the effort that you put into it worth it? And uh, then uh, finally think about how has your church or the camp benefited from the service and hosting an event? Joe, you want to start? Yeah, sure, Jim. Thanks. Um, well, typically at Camp Luther Haven, I'm the work director. So I line up the project, uh, the materials that we need, um, and then lead the project directly with, with the youth uh, through the week. Um, with, with doing that, prior to the event um, involves calling different vendors, um, lining up any type of building materials we might need, tools, making sure the tools are on site for that week. Um, also, I take some steps to... Um, ask different vendors uh, for materials if they'd be willing to donate things. And a lot of times uh, that's been really successful for us. Um, sometimes we've been able to achieve a lot more through the week because um, someone has donated 
um, something extra or has been able to loan us extra tools or equipment like a skid steer to be able to move the project along faster. And during the during the week, um, um, the really the day to day planning is just making sure that uh, number one the safety aspect of it is um, in place. The safety glasses, the work gloves, the um, you know the training with the power tools, and that's also a really fun part that uh, I absolutely love is uh, being able to to um, train train the youth on how to. How to That's use right. the tool safely. Um, it's a really important thing to me. So, um, going along with that, though, um, is it worth it? Um, I can't express how much it, it's worth it at the end of the week. I think about the the fruit, um, the fruits of your labor. Really, you see later, whether it be midweek or later in the week, or even um, months or years after that. You see the repercussions of. You taking the time to um, invest in youth and teach them things that um, they may have never done before, and um, through faith as well. You're doing it. You're putting your faith into action, and um, you see the the light in the youth, and that's what I absolutely love. Thanks, Joe. I remember being on a sermon event with a youth group and learning how to use a jackhammer. <laughs> 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 the youth did better at it than I did. <laughs> Shelley, how about you? Well, I, I along with you, I, I love to uh, uh, be with the kids and, and teach them, uh, especially girls, that they can use tools too. Um, I think that's really an important thing for, for them to be able to experience things that they probably haven't at their own home or they may not be able to experience all those things. Um, there's really nothing like uh, taking a, a circular saw and showing someone how to rip a board and have them go, oh, that was so cool. <laughs> it kind of gives them some power, and they can see really how God can work in their lives many different ways. Um, I think that servant events kind of take people out of their uh, usual elements and make them do things that they probably necessarily would not do. Uh, I remember one event that um, uh, at the end of the day, we're sharing with each other what uh, what's one thing that you did today. And I, an adult leader said, held up her hands, and she said, I picked up dead bats with these hands. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my word, I can't even believe that you did that. But um, that is that is a pretty cool thing. Like Joe, at our event also, we go into the community and ask people for donations to help us be able to uh, cover the cost. We also do some fundraising at our, um, at our congregation. Uh, people are very generous, usually when they find out what you're doing in the community. Uh, there's uh, the VFW and the Lions Clubs, they really mm -hmm. help us out. Um, with uh, with money and um, supplies, and a lot of times they're also a great place to look for people who need help on their homes. Um, that that is great. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, it, it's true. The service becomes contagious, so that people who are watching mm. what you do say, "Hey, could we be a part of mm. that?" And uh, gathering help from the community is really not difficult at all. Many, many people who are glad to do their small part to uh, contribute. So it's very uh, contagious. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you also find that um, the local press is mm. very in, and important with getting that message out mm -hmm. and letting the community know what your you and your church are doing. Uh, one benefit for our church is that it gives... Uh, many people in our congregation an opportunity to serve that week and mm. helping with meals, mm -hmm. uh, helping with host homes. Um, it connects the, the kids with other people in other communities to see that, hey, no matter where I go, um, there are people who believe in the same things that I do that... Uh, Jesus is really an important part of my life. 
really loved hearing the stories about how uh, LCMS certain events are really intergenerational in so many ways in nature. <clears throat> whether that's the service, whether that's the time in God's word, time in worship, um, it brings the family of God together. Um, certainly a part of that intergenerational part for LCMS certain events is getting young people into service. And Joe, you touched on it already. You talked about the life and the light that young people bring to those sites. Can you tell a little bit more about that? What's the joy of having young people serving at your host site? Yeah, as I, I, I briefly talked about it, but one thing that I absolutely love is is um, teaching young people how to use tools and um, and build something. Mm. Um, the joy that they get out of that and the feeling of being empowered that they can take something from nothing to something. You know, if you think about today's world, kids don't get to do that. Right. And so for someone to see a wall being built out of two by fours and raising that wall as a team um, and then building the wall that goes along with that and then building four walls with a doorway <laughs> and a roof, that is cool stuff. And people will never forget that. Mm -hmm. I, I can um, still friends with um, people that I met when I was on a certain event uh, as a youth. In fact, one of them is my, one of my best friends. I was in his, uh, his wedding as his best man. And uh, we, we look back on the things that we accomplished that are still standing and think, wow, that was an awesome experience. Not only did we grow um, in our abilities and confidence with using tools and using our hands to um, put our faith into action, but our faith grew um, because of those experiences. Anyone else have stories about that extra joy of having young people engaged in service? Well, just their enthusiasm, of course, is, is contagious and their energy is contagious. Um, it, it's just great to watch their development during the week. Um, and you can see that, um, I think Shelley said that at the end of the evening, they process, what did you learn? What did you experience? And it's inevitable that you see people changing during the week. You mentioned uh, development with, with power tools, but there's also development in relationships and the ability to talk with somebody from a different race or the ability to work with a senior citizen mm. and you didn't think you could do that. Yeah. Um, so there's just a number, number of ways that you can visually and, and, and listen to the stories, but stories of change, how people have uh, developed during the week. And of course, the end of all that is the idea that, hey, I've got some things that I can do that will impact the kingdom of God. And to see that aha moment on young people's faces um, where they know that they can make a difference in the world. Pretty, pretty empowering. And again, one of those things that make you want to go back year after year after year. Um, young people change. Yeah. I remember a time going to uh, what we thought was going to be an event where we would be building something. And we arrived and uh, we were asked to serve and uh, take care of a job that hadn't been done appropriately uh, several months previously, which was painting a house and all of the paint was already peeling. So we were spending a week thinking we were going to be using power tools and we were just using uh, wire brushes to scrape off the paint. And, and just remember the youth really getting into that. And uh, we didn't get all of the house done and they were just so concerned oh my and an interaction with the homeowner who just couldn't believe that a group of young people would be scraping paint off of her house but we were willing to do that and, and the part that sticks out is we had an opportunity to go back to that same location the following summer and the first thing the young people wanted to do who'd been there the previous summer was drive by the house to see if it really had been painted appropriately <laughs> by someone else following our work. Did it, did it, did our work last? And, uh, just, uh, it's, it's relationships and, and it's the work and, uh, just God using us in ways that we never expect. And, uh, certainly being, uh, able to react to surprises when uh, what you think you're going to be doing isn't what you actually do. Uh, wow. When you think about all of those tran transitions that happen in uh, the lives of young people as they serve uh, and then connecting to their church and then 
really at an event. And Shelly, when you were talking about wrapping it up with questions, uh, just really making that connection of connecting their service to their faith life, that's uh, extremely powerful. Uh, anyone have an, uh, something they want to share about how maybe that has impacted their their life? Well, um, and to answer that, Jim, I'm going to have to tell you a story from when I was in high school. When I was 14 years old, I um, was very ambitious. I, was, I, I liked to work, and I had a summer job at a golf course. I worked about 40 to 50 hours a week. I, uh, my brother and I worked there together, and we would ride together, and we just would we loved working on the golf course. And so our youth director at the time, uh, Mary Lou Brunstetter, she asked, hey, would you, Joe, want to go to a sermon event at Camp Luther Haven? And um, I said, well, what's it all about? And she told me, oh, we do this you know, service project, and you're there for a week and all that stuff in the summer. And I'm just like, well, no, I can't take a week off of work. That's ridiculous. <laughs> You'd be losing so some funds. I would. I'd be losing some funds. And so I, and I was trying, I was 14, I was trying to save up for when I was 16 to buy my first vehicle. And uh, at the time, that was the most important thing to me. <laughs> so um, as uh, I didn't go, and the group came back, and they had I heard the stories in, um, in Sunday school and the, the youth group, and I heard the, the, the good times and the experiences. And so the next year went on, and she asked again, hey, you know, at the time I was 15 years old, would you like to go? And I'm like, no, 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 and uh, I can't do that. So I didn't go again. And then the following summer, I was 16 years old. They asked again, and I said no. So they come back. So I'm 16. They come back from a sermon event. And Mary Lou, she sits me down. She says, she says Joe, I'm asking you for next year, when you're 17, I want you to go to a sermon event. You've got a full year to plan for it. <laughs> so you should, be able to, you should be able to go. <laughs> So, of course, me thinking, oh, shoot, I could probably get out of this somehow. Sure, I'll go. <laughs> so she writes up a contract and says, hey, you're going to, you know, Joe Palinkas is going to go to a certain event, Camp Luther Haven, you know, 2007. So I'm like, oh, no, what did I get myself into? And she hung it on the youth bulletin board <laughs> in, in, in our room. So I was uh, held accountable. So I'm dragging my feet as we're traveling out to Indiana, and um, I go to this camp, and I can tell you that it was a turning point in my life, and um, because I got to experience things that I had never done before. We were working with uh, Burmese, or Burmese uh, refugees, mm -hmm. children, and we put on a day camp for them, and I had two, two young uh, boys, they were probably five and six years old. And I was responsible during the day for these kids and, and all the events that we did. You know, we went swimming, we went did arts and crafts, we did lunch together, and um, uh, it was it was a great experience I'd never been part of before. Um, but then the Bible studies that as a as the CERN event team, the the youth that I was part of, we would get together for Bible studies in the evenings and we would talk about the day and the experiences and. Um, that week, I can say that I truly um, started to grow my personal faith. Mm -hmm. And from then on, I got hooked mm -hmm. and began to be involved with the camp more often, um, helping with other certain events, and then ultimately working at the camp, being uh, the summer maintenance guy, wow. helping to lead the events at wow. the camp. And then here I am today, still helping to host events and lead events. That's great. So, yeah. That's great. Anyone else have a, a story about young people walking away from a servant event and uh, how it might have how how it might have impacted their life? I, I think of this story and and it's one that's impacted me and I know it's impacted our our kids as well. Um, I was serving as a worksite leader uh, for a particular event. We were working on Mary's house and and Mary Mary's house needed the scraping and the painting. It needed a wood fence built for her dogs to keep her dogs in the yard. And Mary had been in a wheelchair for 15 years, um, homebound, had only come out of the house in those 15 years, I think two times a year, mm -hmm. to go to the doctor. Because mm -hmm. um, it was about five steps up 
And so it was just, it was very hard for her kids, her grown kids, to get her in and out of the house. So we built a wheelchair ramp in, mm-hmm. in addition to this. Um, it was a full week. I, I don't know that we had everything absolutely done at the end. I think we were still working on the railings after the kids left. But um, we were there the last the last day of the servant event. Uh, we had finished up. We were eating lunch. And uh, Mary wheels herself out by herself, mm. comes down the ramp, and goes across the street to talk with her neighbors that she hasn't been able to talk to for like 15 years. And just... We're all tearing up. The kids are tearing up. The adults are tearing up. And just that look uh, of sheer joy. And, and I can still picture, I have a picture in my mind of her coming out with her hands raised, just, just so excited that um, the freedom she had received in Christ. And, and what's carried on is, is some of our youth are still in contact with Mary wow. um, yeah. and other people that they've served. Not, not every child or every youth that comes has done that. But just occasionally, boy, you meet somebody and you just you just click, and um, and those relationships continue. Thanks, Barry. I'm tearing up too. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And just in terms of what Joe said, if anybody's struggling to get a group to go on their first servant event, you really only have to convince a young person once, mm-hmm. um, and then never again. <laughs> That's really true. Never again. Um, they'll, they'll automatically ask what we're doing next summer. I like the contract. That was good. Yes, very well done. <laughs> We've talked about construction, uh, relationships. How do you think servant events prepare young people for their future vocations? Well, I think that uh, because when you go to a servant event, you experience a great array of activities there that they help you as you prepare for whatever you're going to do. Um, and they, you look at things a little differently. I think that you learn to work with people. You learn to work with, all, well, older people, people your same age, maybe people of a different race. Um, you just, they give you a, an appreciation for all of God's people. As I think about that, and, and you know, we... We're not expecting every youth that goes on a servant event to be involved in in professional church work or mm-hmm. or even maybe leading servant events. Mm-hmm. Although um, that does happen, it does, it does. It, it, very, more often than not. Yeah. Um, but I think what we see overall is that they come to a realization: I'm important in the church, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and those relationships that they make with with their own group, with other groups, those things continue, and they support and encourage each other as they go on to college, as they um, enter, you know, adult life, sure. if you will, and and, um, and and they know that they're an important part of the church, and that's so important for whatever mm-hmm. your vocation is to know that this is where I belong and yeah. this is where I can serve. And then I, I think there's that confidence. There's that I've been stretched to do some things maybe I'm not as comfortable with that that carries on as they as they move forward in life. Absolutely, and so you can see that. Again, that blessing of relationships and that connection, you know, I think we see that a lot in the church about young people are able to visually and understand and experientially see that place and location for them in, in Christ church, not just in that present time, but then also into the, the future as well. I want to uh, turn, Randy, you touched on this a little bit, um, and I'd be thinking now maybe in the shoes of those who are preparing to take a group onto a servant event. And so maybe this is an LCMS servant event, maybe this is a weekend of service, maybe this is some other mission trip. What, what encouragement would you give to pastors and commissions ministers or lay leaders who are preparing young people to go on such a servant event? We've heard a lot of ideas, but maybe you could summarize that a little bit. If you're going to speak to one who's maybe either questioned about going on it or they know they're going and maybe a little apprehensive, what would you say to them about their preparation? Of course, the, the idea is that we want lives to be changed. And, and so to envision what that change might be like, look at the what, what's the end goal mm. Um, and the end goal is, is certainly many things, whether it's spiritual development or the ability to communicate to Christ. Um, envision those things and then go backwards from there. Um, start, start with prayer. Lord, provide these things in these young people's mm-hmm. lives. Mm-hmm. Um, 
because if you just launch into it because here's something more to do, it really <laughs> doesn't keep your eyes centered on what the purpose is and, and being centered is, is just really critical. And that really helps to smooth other, over some of the things that may go wrong on a servant event if you, you know, keep your eyes on the prize. Um, so, so envision the end, spend a lot of time in, in prayer, um, and then just go at it with enthusiasm. The, the amount of enthusiasm you have, the amount of energy you have, really traces down to the young people that you bring along. So to set that example that service is joyful, um, it's, it's not onerous, it's something that, uh, that Christ gives us to do and, and, uh, and we need to do it joyfully. But again, to, to be able to model that behavior. I like Great. the story that Jim told about uh, taking his youth on an mm-hmm. event and they thought they were going to go and build. <laughs> and what they ended up doing was scraping and painting. Mm-hmm. And I think that that is such, with the kids, they come, they're ready to serve. It doesn't really matter what the work is that's going to be done. Uh, but they're building a community in Christ. They're helping people um, that they wouldn't ordinarily maybe help. But it's like, it's to say the kids are enthusiastic about that. It doesn't matter what the work is. That's not the important part mm-hmm. of a servant event. It's connecting people to Christ. Mm-hmm. That's the important part of a servant event. And, and I would add to the leaders, just to, to summarize, it's a lot of work. Yeah. But it's worth it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, oh. it's totally worth it. Yeah. <laughs> That's good to hear from people who walk through that, to, to know that the investment's worth it. You may be in the middle of the details and wondering if the Joes are going to come and having them come, but that it's worth it when you see lives Amen. transformed on both sides, those who serve and those who are served too. What a beautiful thing to see. Well, we've been talking a lot about the events themselves and you know, you probably a lot of people are hearing about Bible studies and worship opportunities, the preparation things. Well, LCMS Servant Events provides more than just the events themselves, but a lot of resources to help prepare and also for our hosts that are hosting too, to walk through devotional times, Bible study times, and also worship times. Jim, could you maybe give a little bit more about the resources that LCMS Servant Events provides for those preparing the go and then also for our hosts? Well, first, let me say that certainly our goal is to have a group come to our LCMS Servant Events that are happening uh, in so many different places, uh, 60, 65 plus planned for the summer of 2020. But if you're unable to do that and you go to servantevents.lcms.org, you'll find a wealth of uh, resources. First of all, we would encourage uh, a youth worker, a pastor, uh, a church a volunteer to think about how can you serve in your church or in your community. And there on the website, there's 12 ideas for serving in your church and 12 ideas for serving in your community. So maybe just taking a small step and uh, putting something like that together for your church. When I was serving in the parish, we would have a service Saturday where we would go somewhere in the community and serve, and that would be a monthly time when we would get together and uh, get the idea going of how we can serve in the name of Christ. Then if you go to servantevents.lcms.org, you'll find other resources. Uh, First of all, there's a idea you're thinking about hosting. Well, there's a step-by-step approach on how you can do that. You want to attend an event with your youth group. There's a a listing. uh, First of all, the events that are open for you to serve. You can even uh, check, oh, I want to go to this region or state or district. So you can uh, look that way. I'm interested in a construction event. You can look there. So the website helps you select an event that you might want to attend. There's also other resources. We don't just limit our Bible study and devotions for uh, the folks who are our hosts. They're also available for you to uh, use in your own setting. Perhaps you're uh, hosting your own event and you have those resources to draw on. Another good place to go besides servantevents.lcms.org is youthesource.com. That's Y-O-U-T-H-E 
S O U R C E dot com. And uh, there you'll find not just resources for serving, but resources that you can use. First of all, you might be a youth leader and needing some encouragement. That's there for you. You're uh, needing a Bible study to use on a weekly basis with your youth, maybe in the area of service or in some other area. My daughter is a a DCE, and uh, Kayla is always going to Youth eSource looking for uh, a Bible study resource that she can use with her her young people. Uh, Many other places uh, and and resources. And one of the resources that we're getting ready to lead now, and and our leaders will be arriving this afternoon, is our training that we provide annually for our leaders. Last year, we took the year off and we prepared some, uh, oh, I wish I could think of the exact word that they're called, but they're they're just some brief... uh, pre-recorded video segments is that Mm -hmm. does that sound good Mm -hmm. uh and and it just lists from a variety of topics 10 key points for uh 10 key points on how to serve 10 key points for taking a group on an event or hosting an event so those are ready and uh those will also be available uh through servantevents.lcms.org. Great. All sorts of great stuff, Jim. Um, both there on the Servant Events site and also Youth eSource for previous resources. Uh, so again, thanks to the committee and all those that I know have invested time. And as Jim said too, resources that are available not just for those who attend LCMS Servant Events or host, but if you've got opportunities to talk about service with young people, wealth of Bible study materials, worship materials, um, and just a good ideas about serving, uh, ones that are right there in your local context. context. Well, I want to thank you, Shelly, Joe, Barry, and Randy for being in studio today. Thanks for your service and support of LCMS congregations as certainly they serve and as they host as well. That just gives us a great opportunity for young people to engage the world in service in Jesus' name. So again, thanks for all your service. Thank Pleasure you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you, Mark. One of the practices of healthy youth ministry we discuss is providing opportunities for young people to serve and lead. These opportunities can be regular service opportunities amongst the body of believers at the local congregation or other opportunities like LCMS Servant Events take young people out into the community or even across the country or the world. These events expand a young person's view of the world, the church, and how the Holy Spirit impacts others through the words and deeds of Christians. Uh, Our research also showed, uh, this was the research with LCMS Millennials, that those who remained LCMS or in the Christian faith could look back at a higher level to a special event, like a servant event or mission trip or camp experience or maybe another gathering with other young people that was influential in their walk with Jesus or life in his church. Uh, The Holy Spirit uses these experiences and the relationships made through them with peers or also with adults. Um, It helps young people to more deeply understand the faith and God's love for them found in Jesus. And service was often a time for them to understand the purpose of the Christian's life and understand how God has resourced them for current and future vocational service. Uh, So certainly we thank God for LCMS servant events and the service of Jim Lohman and the committee. Uh, Certainly pray for God's blessings upon all the work that they do uh, to resource congregations and to support people as they serve. Uh, Certainly we give thanks for all the congregations and pastors and church workers and lay people who organize and facilitate servant events that help young people grow in their faith and relationships with one another and with adults. So just some closing questions for you to ponder about servant events. Uh, One is, is how is your congregation encouraging young people to serve the family of God in your congregation or community? This might be serving shut-ins or helping those in need in your community. Um, And along with that, how have you seen growth in your young people through this service? For those of you who are doing that, uh, give thanks for that. Uh, Share those stories with your congregation as, again, such a vital part of young people growing in their relationship with Christ and understanding how they've been uniquely made. A second part, too, is that I'm going to be so bold as to ask about how your congregation might be willing to host other LCMS young people and congregations and host an LCMS servant event. What people in your community would be impacted by youth and adults from other locations in the U.S. serving in Jesus' name? And what resources does your congregation have that could be shared with your community and also fellow LCMS Lutherans from outside your community who come in and serve? 
So certainly, be, I hope you would pray about that, think about that. Um, again, give me more opportunities for LCMS young people and congregations to be in service together. Um, and again, also impacting people in your congregation to show them the love of Christ, uh, that both your congregation cares, but then also Lutherans from across the United States would come and serve because of the love of Christ. Certainly, thank you for all that you are doing in the lives of young people, investing in them. Thank you for listening to this podcast. Know that your work is in our prayers as you continue to encourage young people in their walk with Jesus. End Gold Podcast is a production of LCMS Youth Ministry and KFUO Radio. To find out more about LCMS Youth Ministry or to find links to resources mentioned, go to kfuo.org slash youth ministry. Thank you for listening and caring for the young people of our church.